Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all pervading personality of Godhead. O oh, all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisance unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond it's him. He only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It's he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Of water seen the fire of land seen in the water. Only because of him do the material universes only because of him do the material universe temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal appear factual although they are unreal I therefore meditate upon him Lord Sri Krishna I therefore meditate upon him Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth Dharma Projita Kaitravotra Dharma Projita Kaitravotra Parama Nirmatsanam Satam Parama Nirmatsanam Satam Vedyam Vastavam completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Is Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam falam. Nigama kalpatoro galitam falam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho raska bhuvi bhavakaha. Muhur aho raska bhuvi bhavakaha. Oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swak. Shrivantam Swakata Krishna. Shrivantam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hridayantak Stohiya Bhadrani. Hridayantak Stohiya Bhadrani. Vidhu Noti Suhit Satam. Vidhu Noti Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. 
You hear about Krishna from very glorious. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Or at Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within his everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preesu badresu. Nasta preesu bhagrishu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chaitai tairi navidam. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. The devotee, uh, no, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. <clears throat> becomes enlivened by devotional service. And becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chiyante chasya karmani. Chiyante chasya karmani. Drusta evat manishwari. Drusta evat manishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse Number 5. Is that right? Third? Okay. Gamsha Dharma Dugam Dinam Prisham Sudra Padahatam Vivatsam Asruvadanam Shamam Yavasam Ichatam Yamam Yavasva Ichatam Translation by Srila Prabhupada Although the cow is beneficial because one can draw religious principles from her, she was now rendered poor and calfless. Her legs were being beaten by a sudra. There were tears in her eyes, and she was distressed and weak. She was hankering after some grass in the field. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The next symptom of the age of Kali, Kali is the distressed condition of the cow. Milking the cow means drawing the principles of religion in a liquid form. The great Rishis and Munis would live only on milk. Srila Sukadeva Goswami would go to a householder while he was milking the cow, and he would simply take a little quantity of it for subsistence. Even 50 years ago, no one would deprive a sadhu of a quart or two of milk. And every householder would give milk like water. For a sanatanas, a follower of Vedic principles, it is the duty of every householder to have cows and bulls as household paraphernalia, not only for drinking milk, but also for deriving 
religious principles. Sanat the Sanatanist worships cows on religious principles and respects Brahmanas. The cow's milk is required for the sacrificial fire and by performing sacrifices, the householder can be happy. The cow's calf not only is beautiful to look at, but also gives satisfaction to the cow and she delivers as much milk as possible. But in the Kali Yuga, the calves are separated from the cows as early as possible for purposes which may not be mentioned in these pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. The cow stands with tears in her eyes. The Sudra milkman draws milk from the cow artificially, and when there is no milk, the cow is sent to be slaughtered. These greatly sinful acts are responsible for all the troubles in present society. People do not know what they are doing in the name of economic development. The influence of Kali will keep them in the darkness of ignorance. Despite all endeavors for peace and prosperity, they must try to see the cows and the bulls happy in all respects. Foolish people do not know how one earns happiness by making the cows and bulls happy. But it is a fact by the law of nature. Let us take it from the authority of Srimad Bhagavatam and adopt the principles for the total happiness of humanity. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai Bhoda Premanandi Hari Bo. So we see the real importance of the cow, not only for having the best form of food in, in, in the form of uh, milk, uh, pure milk, but also uh, for happiness and peace. Now we know why there's so much trouble in the world today. Because, and, and that's even including India, because there's massive killing of cows and bulls and even children. You, you don't, you know, it, 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 one thing is 5,000 years ago, they didn't imagine that people would kill their own children. It's unimaginable. But that is happening today. So all that killing massive killing not only cows and bulls but uh, many other animals and killing of children and also killing of older people. Uh, nowadays, if you want to die uh, prematurely, you can go to Oregon and be put to death <laughs> legally by a doctor. Uh, and they call it the uh, mercy killing. So, these horrible things are happening and people are in great anxiety and trouble. But if you explain to them why, they don't believe you. That just shows how much people are illusioned. If you say, look, if you protect cows and bulls and, and unborn babies and uh, respect uh, elderly people and protect children and uh, be very uh, kind always and respectful to women. It does just look at you as if there's something wrong with you. That's how sick people are. So the cow stands with tears in her eyes. The sudra milkman draws milk from the cow artificially and when there is no milk, the cow is sent to be slaughtered. That's exactly what's happening in the modern dairies where millions and millions of cows, I mean up to 80 million a year, and cows and bulls are exploited and when they can no longer give milk or when they're no longer of any use, they're sent to the slaughterhouse. So we have to change that. And how do you change it? Well, first of all, if you do service for cows and now there's no excuse for it because we have cows in Redmond we have our own cows in Auburn we're going to get another third property soon because the herd is increasing and people can come and serve Gomata and learn the benefits accrued by serving her like for example Ghee 
in milk, especially from desi cows or A2 milk, just like we have our currency cows that give A2 milk also, uh, is a miracle substance from which you can make ghee, butter first, and then ghee, or yogurt, and then ghee, and you also have cheese. So these are miraculous substances, and the cow dung and the cow urine, these are all miraculous substances that are potentiated or made powerful by the hump on the, especially the gear cow. Uh, and if you drink the milk from such cows with a teaspoon of pure ghee from such cows, everything below your chin will be healed. Everything below your chin will be healed. And if you apply some pure ghee in your nostril, everything in your head will be healed. This is the miracle of the cow. But of course, it sounds too simple, and it sounds like, uh, oh, this, this is, uh, this is uh, old wives' tales. Old wives' tales. But it's not. It's a fact. And we see here, what does it say here? It said the great rishis, rishis were l kings. There were saintly kings who were managing entire uh, countries and, and, and uh, kingdoms. The great rishis and munis, these are the sadhus, would live only on milk. Sri Sukadeva Goswami would go to a household while he was milking a cow and he would simply take a little quantity of it for subsistence. Even 50 years ago, Matt, Matt, now it's more than that, no one would deprive a sadhu of a quart or two of milk and every householder would give milk like water. For a sanatanist, a follower of Vedic principles, it is the duty of every householder to have cows and bulls as household paraphernalia, not only for drinking milk, but also for deriving religious principles. So we should not have cows to exploit them or bulls to exploit them, but we should love them, just like a ma ma member of the family. One time I went to Nepal, and uh, some of the devotees I was with said, who were Nepalis, they said, we're going to go visit a family. I said, okay. So I thought it was close by, but actually it was very far away. And it took a long time to get there. And we couldn't reach their home by, a, by the car. We had to walk a long distance also. And it was, it was not high up on a mountain, but it was on a high hill. And when we got there, the first story was the barn with the cows. And the second story was the house. And uh, I, was, I was asking the devotees, said, how come they do like this? And they said, oh, you'll see. So we went up. First of all, we saw the cows. And then we went up some stairs. And it was the house. And the whole family was there. And uh, they had a uh, uh, tandoor also, a uh, stove. Uh, not a stove, but a, uh, a brick oven. And they would cook everything in the tandoor. It wasn't a, a ground tundra. It was a, you know, it was a stand-up uh, clay and, and brick oven. And it kept the whole house warm, and they cooked everything in there. You know, uh, they would boil milk, and they would cook sabjis, and they'd make rotis and everything. And the house was kept warm by two means. One was the, the, the oven, and sometimes the oven would wouldn't be working, uh, but the house was still warm because the heat from the cows was going up. So then I understood why they keep the cows on the bottom. And also, the cow dung uh, protects the home from radiation. The cow dung releases oxygen and purifies the house. So there are many medicinal qualities of cow dung and urine also. So this was the traditional lifestyle of people before. Nowadays, you get these nice houses that cost a million, million and a half dollars. 
made of all kinds of uh, artificial, uh, what you call, inorganic chemicals, you know, the carpets, the paint, and uh, the siding, and uh, so many things. Uh, we're, we're, we're surrounded by inorganic chemicals all the time in these modern houses. And this is one reason why people get cancer. Anyway, these, the house, that, I mean, the, the dwelling that I went to in Nepal was me mostly made out of wood and, and cow dung and, and mud. So uh, there's a lot to learn from reading the Bhagavatam. And we see that if people really want peace, happiness, and prosperity, it's based on protecting the cow and the bull. Protecting the cow and the bull. And how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, you have to understand what you're reaching for. What, what is the optimal goal? And then you organize to reach that goal. If you don't do that, then you just stay stuck. Like, for example, I had an uncle... Uh, and he was a nice man and his wife they're both really nice pious people and he was a uh, he was a tailor and, and to make a little extra money he was he was doing dry cleaning and usually when you do dry cleaning you send it to a, a factory that has chemicals and because it's dry cleaning right they're not washing the clothes and uh, those chemicals are very toxic and usually they have all these protective uh, things so that the workers don't get, uh, you know, cancer from breathing in those heavy-duty chemicals. Anyway, my uncle wanted to make an extra 50 cents on a shirt or a dollar on a, on a suit. So he bought the chemicals himself, and in his kitchen, he was dipping the clothes into the chemicals and drying them, right? Two years later, he and his wife were both dead by making chem because of the breathing in those chemicals. And I also had a friend of mine. He was a very nice devotee. He had opened a small temple in in Haridwar. And uh, in order to support the temple, he got this great idea because in, in Haridwar you have this Harki Puri bridge, and and every night there's thousands of people there, you know, doing. Uh, Ganga Puja, and it's great kirtan. I mean, I've I've done kirtan there, and everybody likes to dance because it's 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 like a holiday place. You know, it's a pilgrimage, and the, mostly pious Hindus go there. And when they see the kirtan, they start dancing. So it's kirtan there is fantastic. And well, my friend, in order he he decided to sell uh, these. Uh, pictures of Radha and Krishna, but with this coating of this chemical that makes it very shiny and protects the, the picture. So he bought the chemicals and started making those pictures and selling them, and it was, it was very lucrative for the temple. And two years later, he was dead from breathing in those chemicals, right? So uh, you're not buying chemicals, but there are all kinds of inorganic substances in a house nowadays, you know, from plastics to other things. And uh, just heating those things up uh, releases uh, fumes, and you breathe those fumes in, and eventually you get cancer. Right. So going back to a much more... Uh, holistic type of life is very important, but you can't do it overnight. Uh, but eventually we should aim for that, where everybody has their own uh, farm, a small farm, and there's a, uh, there's a major, uh, there's a primary farm where the, there's a, a dairy, and everybody can milk their cows every morning, and the dairy truck comes and collects the milk and processes it and sells it. And then uh, there's also uh, other uh, uh, businesses in the sense of uh, uh, making cheese, making yogurt, making ghee, all these different things. And our kids 
learn, uh, go to agricultural college, and he learned techniques and uh, strategies for growing vegetables, for taking care of the land, taking care of cows, and so forth. And you end up, end up having this supply chain of devotees all living in the, s in the same area, all s uh, quasi independent, but working cooperatively. And there's a major temple also. So basically, you start with a village and it becomes a small town. And everybody has a very simple life where you have time for chanting Hare Krishna. You're not in the corporate structure. You have your independence, you're growing your own food, you have your own cows, and uh, you're growing it up without any uh, inorganic chemicals around you <laughs> and, in, and uh, unclean things and eating fresh food and you have that fresh milk every day. And then you can have rishis, you can have sannyasis, and you have whole, we, we recreate the whole Vedic culture again based on cow protection, uh, respect for brahmanas and sadhus and Harinam Sankirtan going on all the time and uh, free prasadam and generosity and you get the idea. We should aim for that. It might take a generation or two, but we should aim for that. And that would be like a epiphany, a waking up of America. And because the, what's going to happen in the next some years is this is Kali Yuga, unless there is something that awakens people to understanding they're going in the wrong direction, it's going to get worse and worse. And unless we do something uh, with Kirtan, with uh, Sankirtan, food, uh, prasadam distribution, book distribution, but giving a model, an alternative model for organiz organizing the society, which is based on Varnashram Dharma, uh, this is going to be a very dark future for everybody. So we have a responsibility to uh, go in a direction gradually that will give an alternative to people. And believe me, they're looking for it. They are looking for it. We're not presenting it strong enough yet or emphatically enough. But if we do, it will attract many, many people who want to have a simple and happy life and not be dependent all the time on uh, supply chains uh, you know, uh, uh, of industrial agriculture and this thing and that thing. they are all, you know drugs, and so forth, that are all uh, exploiting them. So these are a few ideas. That's why we're reading Bhagavatam, and we see uh, where Prabhupada says, these greatly sinful acts, what does he mean? Uh, a cow is standing with tears in her eyes. The sudra milkman draws milk from the cow artificially, and where there is no milk, the cow is sent to be slaughtered. These greatly sinful acts are responsible for all the troubles in present society. People do not know what they are doing in the name of economic development. The influence of Kali will keep them in the darkness of ignorance. Despite all endeavors for peace and prosperity, they must try to see the cows and bulls happy in all respects. Now, do we actually believe this? I mean, I believe it. And we should come to believing this because this is a fact. This is what Prabhupada is writing. This is what's in the Bhagavatam. This is what the ancient uh, saints were all talking about. And it's very simple. It's not complicated. So when we do that, then we create a society in which people can be happy. And in the Nectar of Instruction, it says, the holy name, character, pastimes and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of avidya, ignorance, cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue 
and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. The holy name of the purport by Srila Prabhupada, the holy name of Lord Krishna, his quality, pastimes, and so forth are all of the nature of absolute truth, beauty, and bliss. Naturally, they are very sweet, like sugar candy, which appeals to everyone. Ignorance, however, is compared to the disease called jaundice, which is caused by bilious secretions. Attacked by jaundice, the tongue of a diseased person cannot palatably relish sugar candy. Rather, a person with jaundice considers something sweet to taste very bitter. Avidya, ignorance, similarly, similarly perverts the ability to relish the transcendental palatable name, quality, form, and pastimes of Krishna. Despite this disease, if one with great care and attention takes to Krishna consciousness, chanting the holy name and hearing Krishna's transcendental pastimes, his ignorance will be destroyed and his tongue enabled to taste the sweetness of the transcendental nature of Krishna and his paraphernalia. Such a recovery of spiritual health is possible only by the regular cultivation of Krishna consciousness. So this month is extremely important. It's Kartik. There are so many festivals in this month. Every day is a festival. In fact, the greatest festival of all is Damodar, uh, is during this Damodar month. Why is it named Damodar month? Because every day we're thinking about uh, Krishna and his glorious pastime with Mother Yasoda. This, this is one of the most, or the most relishable pastime of the Lord <coughs> because it's imbued with intense love. So we should take advantage of this time because there's so many festivals we're going to do. Uh, not only at Dhammadar Astakam, but there's also Govardhan Puja, there's Diwali, there's Tulsi Vivaha, so many things in this month. And it's all auspicious. So w this is a time to relish the nectar of Krishna's sweet pastimes. Srila Prabhupada, Patita Pavani Ki Jai, Haribo. Are there any questions? Who wants a cow in their backyard? <laughs> you don't want one? Okay. Well, we can get one for you. We have, you know. We, the zebu the zebu is a small cow. You could keep it in your backyard. And if you have a big backyard, you can get one of the big cows because some of our cows are going to be retired soon. In other words, they're the milking cows that are not able to have any more milk. They're the bulls. Uh, and they're very sweet and they're gentle. They're easy to take care of. Haribo. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.